Friends, there is nothing virtual, socially distant, sanitary, quarantined, or masked about today's gospel text. The reading from Mark describes an actual intrusion upon a really real worship gathering real time. Here's a man inflicted with an unclean spirit in a standing room only synagogue house, getting all up in Jesus' face, not even maintaining six feet distance and certainly not wearing a mask. Today, I want to just pause for a moment and acknowledge the challenge of bridging the gap between an ancient text describing an exorcism and a pajama-wearing, coffee-sipping, couch-sitting, virtual-worshipping congregation all in their separate homes. And before you say, hey, don't judge, let me assure you, I'm not. On Sunday mornings, when I'm not called upon to do this, I myself am on, on my own couch doing all that. But come on, let's admit, it's difficult to live stream Mark's account of new life streaming to this once unclean, now made whole man. We're not in that crowded Capernaum synagogue with Jesus showing his authority over demons. Right now, we're avoiding crowds. Our demonology is far less robust than back then. And I'd wager that we're just a bit fickle when it comes to ascribing authority to anyone but, say, ourselves, perhaps? Still, there's got to be something relevant and compelling and real that got you tuned into this live-streamed worship today. That we're here, sort of together, this morning, listening to this ancient text, text is, in fact, a sign that you and I, at some point in our lives, and also once again today, got caught up in Jesus' fishing net to be taught how to people fish ourselves. This remote Capernaum synagogue scene, my friends, is Mr. Mark's first account of what Jesus' Jesus's people fishing actually looks like. It looks like Christ teaching and healing with authority, an authority that both shocks and awes. As a former English teacher, I'd kind of like to get a hold of Jesus' lesson plan to find out what exactly was the content of his teaching there in that synagogue. But Mark's not so much interested in content here. Here, in this account of Jesus, the what of his teaching is not nearly as important as the how. Jesus teaches with authority. The usual teachers, uh, priests and scribes, religious authorities, you know, the literate bunch, the self-appointed, scrupulous guardians of tradition, these guys, and they were guys, uh, these, these guys had their way of teaching, typically beginning an important lesson with, as Moses said, or as Rabbi so-and-so said. This is not the way Jesus teaches here. Here in the midst of that Capernaum synagogue is a man without credentials. Yet he begins on his own authority to tell people what God's will is and how the reign of God is closer to us than two teenagers necking, necking in a parked car. Yes, indeed, jaw-dropping stuff. And in one fell swoop, he has so lured in his hearers that the town, untouchable, untouchable, throws a tissy fit. Fishing for people begins in the community of worship where the authority of God astounds. It lures you in. This unparalleled authority baits those it threatens most. Those with unclean spirits. Those with demons. <laughs> it's true. 
Neither you nor I are very much used to talking about demons. As enlightened humans, we'd operate more comfortably with the currency of modern medical diagnoses. Demon is stuff is what you and I have learned to limit to the movie screen. There it's fine to see heads turning all the way around or Freddy Krueger voices ushered from the throats of children. It's tempting to file away such wild accounts like Jesus' face-off with this demon-possessed man as primitive lore or to chalk it up uh, up his exorcism as a little magic trick, or worst of all, to isolate this jaw-dropping episode to another time, to someone else, having very little to do with us today. Submitting to such temptations would mean utterly missing our first people-fishing lesson. Like it or not, this word lives and breathes. Here's a story that unavoidably envelops us. Go ahead and be astounded. Be overwhelmed. There's nothing benign about what you hear today. Authority and power are in this room here and your room there. The reign of God is not only announced, it's performed. It's a reign that shows what true authority is and in whom true authority lies. You won't find the same authority in good grades or in your political party or in a conspiracy theory or in military might. You won't even encounter it in doctrine or theological proclivities or our carefully ordered order of worships. True authority waltzes into the lives of those Sabbath-observing Jews and into the lives of us Sunday-going or staying church folk today. True authority comes to us in the personhood of Jesus and him alone. What this means fundamentally to all of us is this. With the risen Christ here, and with you there and everywhere, something new is always afoot. With Jesus in the room and our rooms, you and I will be lured in. We will be baited. Heck, some of us may very well cry out, what do you, Jesus, have to do with us to me? Turns out Jesus has everything to do with us with you, with me. And what's more, Jesus has everything to do with the marginalized, hurting ones around us. Try as we may to turn the other way. Jesus' authority refuses to let us off the hook. Lest we forget, this whole incident takes place in a synagogue out in the sticks. Jesus has brought us out to the sticks He's brought us from our many and various virtual places this morning to be face-to-face -face with an unnamed, marginalized, untouchable man way out in a fishing town. And miracle of miracles, life as he knows it gets changed. Indeed, there's nothing benign about learning people fishing from this Jesus. His authority beckons. Boundaries crumble. Distance collapses. The untouchables are made whole. And there goes life as the synagogue and this church knows it. Today, for our first people fishing lesson, Jesus gets outed as the Holy One of God. The Holy One of God. With this Holy One of God here with us now, all bets are off. Nothing can stay the stain. There will never ever be a normal. You and I and every person we'd rather keep at arm's length become subject to the authority that has set up shop in Jesus. Here's good news that 
if we're honest, isn't all that easy to hear. I'll openly admit I have some authority issues. <laughs> Most days I'd much rather sneak my will be done into the Lord's Prayer rather than that submissive language Jesus teaches. I know I'm not alone. It's a real buzzkill for most of us to learn we're not the center of the universe. That we don't have the ultimate say. The Holy One of God does. The inconvenient truth confronting us is that we have a God who sends us to fish for people possessed by all kinds of demons in the name of Jesus Christ. Here's a God who calls us to recognize God's image in those people, and because we share divine parentage, to acknowledge the ones we just as soon overlook as our siblings. Not only is Jesus' authority in our lives a pull on our time, it takes a lot of energy, and it's anything but natural. This is why God takes it upon God's own self to graciously douse us with forgiveness Sunday in and Sunday out, that we'd get over our own limitations to live as children of God. This is why God, God is still putting God's own words into the mouths of prophetic preachers that they might speak to all of us everything God commands. This issue we have with authority is why God lavishly, continually, and freely chooses to invite us to this table. That with Jesus in our mouths and in our throats, we may become what we eat. Lure in the broken and brokenhearted and astound all with the authority and compassion of the Holy One of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.